Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I am back to talk about all of the fragrances that I wore last week. So as always, I've got a ton. You guys know I've been, I've had a lot of smelly mail come my way. I have, um, I just did a huge Middle Eastern sample haul. I just got some generic perfumes. So I have been doing a ton of testing and I've just got a lot here. So I'm gonna jump right in. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is not any of those. I actually finished something from my Project Pan. So I'm super excited about that. Um, I finally finished up this Ellis Brooklyn Sweet perfume. I really love this. This is one of my favorite pear and ambrette combination perfumes. There are a lot of them on the market. Um, Ariana Grande makes one. Clean makes one. I think it's called like Radiant Nectar or something. Um, there are quite a few pear and ambrette combination perfumes on the market. It's a really beautiful combination. It's like a soft, fuzzy, warm pear. It's not overly sweet, really warm, cozy. So I, I use this as a base. This is from Sweet Essentials and this is called Amber White. This is one of my absolute favorite scents from Sweet Essentials. They actually sent this one to me for free with my last, the last really big order I did. And this is amazing. I don't know why I hadn't picked this up on my own. This is like a sweet, warm vanilla white amber and it's so good and what i'll do is i'll just spray a bunch of it into the palm of my hand and then i'll just rub it on like a body oil so i put this on as a base and then i was like well i'm just gonna go ahead and use up the rest of my suite because i had just maybe one application left so i went ahead and sprayed this on knowing that this would wear off because that's part of the reason why I'm not gonna repurchase this is because this is, it just does not perform well on me. It wears off after, I don't know, maybe a couple of hours. So yeah, it pretty much wore off after a couple of hours. And then I went ahead and sprayed on my Coco Pink Tahota. This fragrance is so good. If you like Indult Tahota, that's basically what this is. It's just a clone of Indult Tahota. Um, it's a pretty straightforward, kind of slightly sweet, it doesn't go too, too gourmand, but it's slightly gourmand. It's just a beautiful vanilla. I love it. Um, my liquid is really starting to darken up, which makes me happy because I'm hoping that it will help the perfume really deepen up and maybe it'll start performing a little bit better. This one does okay. I was able to smell it for a few hours, maybe three hours or so. I tested these side by side and one of them does better in heat and one of them does better in the cold. And I can't totally remember which one it is, but yeah, this either does better in the heat or the cold. I'll have to, it was pretty warm out the day that I wore this and it didn't last a super long time. So I'm thinking this is the one that does better in the cold possibly. But either way, I love this scent. This is obviously the spray version that I've got. Um, I have a feeling that the oil version would be even better. I bet the oil would last longer than the spray version does. So I may pick up the oil version, like a little sample of the oil version just to see. But I like to layer this over Vanilla Musk from Me Matte which smells really, really similar to this. So I really don't need another oil to layer it over, but I don't know, I just kinda want to. So anyways, that is Coco Pink Tahota. Okay, next I wanted to test out my generic perfumes version of Queer Beluga from Guerlain. I'm having a hard time with this one. There's something in the oil that is not in Queer Beluga and I cannot put my finger on it. And whatever it is in the oil, it's throwing me off. It's throwing me off. It doesn't smell like Queer Beluga to my brain when I smell it. However, the day that I put this on, I put a body oil on first. So I used my Coco Pink. This is the Silky Soft Body Oil, the light formula. And this is in the scent, the scent called Cake on Mondays. And cake, this is basically like a, this has got some almond in it. So it's like a sweet, almond cake is what it smells like to me. A sweet almond, really vanilla heavy, like pound cake or something is what cake on Monday smells like. I love it. Um, when it gets on skin, it kind of, the almond is there, but the almond really, really like mellows out. So it ends up just smelling like this really yummy 
cakey fragrance. I layered Queer Beluga over this and that was definitely the right thing to do. The heavy amounts of vanilla that Cake in on Mondays has in it really helped bring out the vanilla in the Queer Beluga and the Queer Belugas ended up smelling like almost identical to the real thing. So I think what it is, is the generic version just doesn't have as much vanilla in it. Yes, it doesn't have an, as much vanilla in it and it's got a little bit more of that suede note in it, which is what is throwing my brain off and making me think that this doesn't smell exactly like it. It just needs more vanilla. So that's what I'm gonna be doing from here on. Um, when I wear the oil, I'm just gonna layer it over like a vanilla lotion or I will layer a simple plain vanilla um, vanilla perfume over the oil just to bring out more of that vanilla because that's what it needs. It needs more vanilla in for it to smell like Queer Beluga. Um, and Queer Beluga, it is a vanilla perfume, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's like a vanilla dominant perfume. It's so well blended. And I think that that's what this, what's going on with this is this one, it's not that it's not well blended, it's just, it's almost like the ratios are off a little bit. Like there's too much leather or suede in this one and not enough vanilla. And, but if you add vanilla to it, then it ends up smelling exactly like Queer Beluga. So yeah, that is my final verdict on the Queer Beluga one. You really need to add some vanilla to this one for it, in order for it to smell just like Queer Beluga. So yeah, do it. I like it, it's fine. Um, I have a bottle of Queer Beluga thanks to my beautiful friend. So this is probably not an oil that I'm gonna reach for a ton just because I'll just reach for my perfume, but I'm definitely gonna hold on to it. And it may be that this one just needs to chill for a while. Like it might just need to age some. So I'm gonna put this one away. I'll revisit this one after, I don't know, maybe four to six months or so and we'll see. Um, this is out of the six out of yeah out of the six oils that I picked out This is the only one that I didn't feel like was a hundred percent spot-on clone for the original um, From the ones that I own and can compare so anyways that is generic perfumes queer beluga Okay, next I want wore one of my smelly mail samples This is from my last week's smelly mail package and this is from a little indie brand called Carnival Wax. And this one is called Clown Cake. It's like a spiced, and I think it's got a little bit of a booze note in it, but it's like a spiced cake, like a yummy spiced cake. It's super edible, yummy, gourmand. Um, I loved it. I enjoyed wearing this so much. It lasted a really long time. I, gosh, I think I could smell this for a good seven or eight hours. It lasted forever and I really love it. However, this is probably the most expensive indie house I've come across yet. Um, a full size of one of their oils is like a hundred, it's over a hundred dollars, which to me is crazy because you can find, this is not super unique. Um, you can definitely find scents just like this from Solstice Scents, which you can get a full, you know, a rollerball of oil for like $18. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend Solstice Scent or Sucre Bay. You can find something very, very similar to this from other indie houses that are much, much more affordable. Um, I feel like for an indie house and for a scent like this, over $100 is insane. That it's crazy. I mean, that's crazy town prices because they're not using, you know, any kind of fantastic material or materials that other people aren't using. So the price on this is crazy, crazy town. So yeah, great scent, but I'm sure I've got something already in my collection from Solstice Scents that smell, or Sucre Bay that smells just like it. So that is Clown Cake from Carnival Wax. Okay, next I've got a whole little like Tupperware thing of decants of fragrances I before I whenever I used to declutter before I would sell off bottles I would make decants thinking that I was gonna want them or miss them or want them in my collection for reference and so I've got this whole little Tupperware of decants that I made of a whole bunch of scents that I really don't enjoy and I I've never missed any of them I've never wanted to revisit any of them so yeah, I'm trying to just like pull them out a few at a time to try and work through them because I don't want them to go bad. 
Um, they're like four year, four or five year old decants at this point, and they're definitely going to go off. Um, de when you decant, they just a lot of oxygen gets introduced to the perfume, and usually they don't last this long. Um, this is our Moff Italiano or Donna Italiano, I think, and this is a. 100% clone of Dolce & Gabbana Pour Femme or Pour Femme Intense, probably Pour Femme Intense. Um, I like this much better than Pour Femme though. I like the Armaf version so much better. There's something so much more like palatable about this version than the real thing. And yeah, so this one I wore, I think I wore it in the evening. It was fine. It lasted a really long time. It's the, it performs really, really well. This is just not my favorite scent. I'm not a fan of Dolce & Gabbana Pour Femme. I jumped on the hype train years and years ago when it was getting super hyped up. I like that it's got a marshmallow note in it, but there's something kind of sickening and headache inducing about this fragrance to me. Even though, like I said, I do like the Armoff version a ton better, um, I still, I've got about one more use left in this one, so I'll go ahead and use this up and, and be done with it. But yeah, uh, Armoff, I think it's Armoff Donna Italiano, and it's good. It's just not, it's not anything that I really enjoy wearing. So I'm just trying to work my way through these. If I had to, if I had to choose, I would definitely choose the Armoff over the original. Um, so yeah, that is Armoff, I think it's Donna Italiano. Okay, next I wore this Pana London. This is the pink, uh, pink Marc de, Ch de Champagne Truffle. And this one, I was so excited to test this one. This fragrance is gorgeous. Um, I've only got a little tiny bit of it left and I absolutely loved this one. This is like a, kind of like a light chocolate fragrance, but when this one dries down, it ends up smelling like a vintage kind of 80s light floral. It ended up smelling very vintage on my skin, and so I loved everything about this scent. I loved the opening of it. I loved the beginning. You know, I loved the first 30 minutes or so of wearing it because it smelled like this light, beautiful, kind of slightly effervescent chocolate scent, and then it dried down to this beautiful, kind of nostalgic, vintage-smelling perfume, and I was in heaven. I adore this one. Um, it didn't last very long total though. I would say I only got maybe maybe three or so hours out of this before it was just completely gone. So probably not one that I would pick up a full bottle of because I think Panna is quite expensive and it just did not last very long on me at all. Um, I love it though. I will enjoy the rest of this sample and I adore it, but I probably wouldn't buy a full bottle um, just because of the performance. So that is Panna London, basically pink champagne truffle. Okay, this next one, this is a sample that somebody sent to me ages ago. And it's another one that I pulled out because I was like, I need it's darkening up so, so much and I need to use this before it goes bad. I do not want this one to go off. This is Profumum Roma Dulcis, Dulcis in Fundo. Really, really popular gourmand niche fragrance. This is like a creamy citrus vanilla fragrance to me and I absolutely adore this. Um, yeah, the liquid has deepened up so, so much since this was sent to me. And again, it's a decant so I know it's gonna go off quick, you know, a lot quicker than it normally would. And I do not want this to go off before I can wear it all. So this one's living out right now. Um, I, this, I've only got about one wear left in this and then this will be gone. I adore this perfume. This thing is an absolute beast on me too. Um, this was one that I wore. I sprayed this on. It was one of the days after something had worn off on me by kind of mid afternoon. And so I went ahead and sprayed this on. I went in pretty heavy and that was it for the day. I smelled like this for the rest of the day until the next morning when I took a shower and washed it off. Um, it's an absolute beast. It's an amazing gourmand scent. This is one, I don't know why I haven't like pursued a full bottle of this. This one's gotten very, very hyped up in the niche community and I think that that's why I hate jumping on hype trains and I hate buying really, really hyped up perfumes. So I think that's really the root of why I haven't 
but I really, really love this scent. So it's one that I'm gonna need to definitely get on my wish list on Lucky Scent because, oh, it's such a good gourmand. I mean, it's worth the niche price tag too because it performs incredibly well and it's just such a yummy fragrance. So that is Profumum Roma Dulcis in Fundo. Okay, next I wore, this is one of the By Rosie Jane perfumes. I am slowly working my way through the discovery kit. I am gonna go ahead and film a, a whole video because there are some that I'm just not gonna wear because I don't like them. Um, this was one that I was on the fence about whether I was gonna like it or not. This one is called Dylan. This one's basically like a white musk, but it's got a cedar note in it, and I'm pretty sure it's like a synthetic cedar note in it and that on my skin the synthetic cedar note is basically what dominated the whole scent on me so this one ended up going very masculine on me and I'm not I really really do not like synthetic cedar so this was a no-go for me um, I was on the fence as to whether I was gonna like this one or not and I really ended up not liking this and this one actually lasted I think this whole house I, I have a feeling that this whole house performs really, really well because this was one that I was hoping desperately that it would wear off and it just would not wear off. So I smelled like this for probably a good eight hours before I was able to apply anything else. It just would not wear off. It lasted forever. Um, so yeah, this one is a no-go for me because it's like a masculine white musk and there's another white musk in, this, in the set that leans more feminine and smells way, way better to me than this one. So yeah, this one is a no, definitely. So that is by Rosie Jane Dillon. Okay, next I wore, this is the um, Generic Perfumes French Kiss from Guerlain, and this is amazing. This smells 99.5% identical to French Kiss. Um, I've been meaning to pull out my decant or my vial that I have of French Kiss so I can go ahead and compare right next to each other. I already know though that this is going to be a spot on clone for it. It's, it smells exactly like it. I love it. Every generic perfumes fragrance that I got except for one, which is the Queer Beluga. That's the only one that I got that I don't think is a spot on dupe, but all every other one that I have the fragrance that, you know, that I have the original fragrance, it smells exactly like it. This one is so good. This is, this is amazing clone oil. It smells exactly like it. I don't know the difference. Like I could be wearing the real perfume right now. It's that close. I'm so happy to have this one in my collection. As much as I would love a bottle of French Kiss, I don't foresee myself buying a full bottle of it. So, I am super happy to have the oil. It smells very similar to my insolence. This is just, it's a little bit lighter and brighter. It doesn't have the beautiful almond blossom, so it's missing kind of that vanillic powderiness that my insolence has. This is more, um, this is basically my insolence without that vanillic powderiness. It's basically all of the brightness and the citrus and kind of a lighter vanilla. I love it. It smells amazing. This is an absolute beast. It will last hours and hours and hours. This one is so, so good. I can't recommend this one enough. It's amazing. So I uploaded my generic perfumes video before generic could get me a discount code um, for free shipping. So. If you guys are interested and you are gonna put in an order, use the code. I'm gonna put it on the screen for you because they left the, the H off the end of my name, so it's just Sarah without an H, Sarah free. And you will get free shipping on orders over $99 um, because they are shipping from the Middle East, so them eating that shipping cost is probably expensive. Um, that is the one thing I've heard that shipping can be a little bit high with generic, but it's because of where they're coming from. I'm pretty sure that they're based out of like uh, the UAE. I'm not totally sure, but I think that they're based out of the UAE. So anyways, yeah, that is Girl on French Kiss. Such an amazing one. Okay, next I wore one of my Anibis uh, Middle Eastern samples. This is Paris Corner Autobiography Supreme Gold. And um, I wore this one, I'm glad I wore it in the evening kind of to bed. I used most of my sample up. I really, really like this one. I'm gonna hang on to this sample for like a year 
and see if the sample deepens up at all. Because I feel like if this one had time to age, it would get so much better. But it's really, really light. It's reminding me of like the lightness of the Ragba sample that I got. Um, it's just very, very light. I could only smell this on me for maybe like 30 or 45 minutes. It wore off so, so quickly. This one, I think this one's got a little bit of tobacco in it. It's, it's like a light floral, kind of slightly powdery, like light, kind of very sweet and light, delicate kind of tobacco fragrance. I really liked this one. I love the way it smelled on, and I just really like the way that it smells, but it's nothing groundbreaking, and it's very, very light, and just did not perform well at all. So, yeah, this is a no-go. I would not buy a full bottle of this one. Um, like, like I said, though, I am gonna put this one away and let it sit for, like, maybe a year, and then revisit it and see if it deepens up at all, because I just have a feeling that it will. It's... It just seems, like I said, it's reminding me of Ragba, of the Ragba sample that I got that is so light compared to mine. So yeah, this, for me right now, this is a, I wouldn't recommend this one. This is Paris Corner Autobiography Supreme Gold. Okay, next, this is another one of those decants that I told you I decluttered and made. Um, this is the actual Dolce & Gabbana Pore Femme though. I really don't like Pour Femme. Um, it's just not a fragrance that I enjoy. This one has deepened up so much though, and it's an absolute beast. This one lasts forever now, and I wore it as a bedtime fragrance because I just don't enjoy it that much. There is a coziness with the kind of perfumey marshmallow aspect to this that I do kind of like. And it, I really like smelling it out of the bottle. I just don't love wearing it. It's such a weird situation. I definitely like the Armoff version much, much better. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's not a bad fragrance. It smells really nice. I just don't enjoy smelling like this. But yeah, I way oversprayed because this thing was almost full and I'm, I'm trying to just work through these before they go bad. Um, this is an absolute beast on me. <laughs> I sprayed this on it probably I don't know, maybe about seven o'clock last night and I could I smelled like this until I took a shower this morning. Um, so yeah, this is a beast, lasts forever. Like I said, this decant is probably somewhere between four and five years old at this point. So I don't know if it's steepened up. I don't remember it performing as well when I had the bottle, um, like when I had a fresh bottle. I don't remember it performing as well as it does now. So I'm wondering if this is just deepened up. So. I'm not a huge fan of this fragrance, but I am going to work through this because I don't want to, I don't want to waste it and I don't want it to go bad. So that is Dolce & Gabbana Pour Femme. And last but not least, I wore this one here. This is Elizabeth & James Nirvana White. This fragrance, this is Lily of the Valley Musk and I don't know why I cannot ever for the life of me remember the third note in this. There are only three notes. I always remember Musk and Lily of the Valley. Cannot remember the third note. I love this fragrance. This thing lasts absolutely forever. It's a beast on me. But I don't know, there's something about it that I'm just not loving as much anymore. This is one that I will never get rid of because these, um, these fragrances have been discontinued and I will never let any of them go even if I kind of fall out of love with them the way that I have this one. And it prob probably the reason I've kind of fallen out of love with this one is that I've been on a musk, kick, a musk kick for so long. I've gotten so many amazing musk perfumes in my collection and I've gotten so many samples and smelled just so many good musk perfumes that this one is kind of, I don't know, it's a little bit lacking in comparison. I still do really like it and it performs so well on me. Um, I love the bottles too. I love the Elizabeth and James bottles and yeah, I mean, it's nice. It's not one that I'm probably gonna reach for a ton, maybe like once a year, but I will keep this in my collection forever because, yeah, because I just can't let it go. So yeah, I enjoyed it. It was it was okay. I just, it was one of those, you know when you sometimes spray on a perfume and you're like, I mean, yeah, I smell fine and it's nice, but it's just not bringing you a ton of joy. That's how this, that's how I was the day that I wore this. I was like, oh, 
I could be wearing something else. And it could be just because I've got so many things right now that I could be testing, that I need to be testing, um, that are just exciting me so much more that I probably shouldn't have reached for a fragrance like this during a time like this. Um, I think it's just a combination of things. I'm such a weirdo and I'm rambling, so I'm gonna stop. But yeah, that is um, Elizabeth and James Nirvana White. And that is gonna be it, guys. Those are all of the fragrances that I wore last week. I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I will see you in my next one. Bye.